Hey, how's it going folks? E.T. here with another tutorial. Another iMovie tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to show you how to make a really simple outro card that leaves you space to put your recommended videos at the end of your screen on your video. And it looks something like this. Okay, so it'll be a nice background, any image you want. And we'll put subscribe and learn more, which leaves you space to put one, two, three, and your subscribe icon here. Okay, that's pretty much what we're gonna show you. It's really simple, and you can do it within iMovie, no problem. Okay, let's go into iMovie here. I just have a video and a sound clip at the bottom here. And what I wanna do is just create a little outro here. So I'm gonna go into our backgrounds, and you can select anything you want here. Or you could get an image and drag it in there. But my usual, my trademarked outro is I use the stars here. And I drag it into the timeline, and you'll extend it for 15 seconds. And that's the current recommended limit for outros, but you can do as long as you want. But 15 seconds is kind of the limit that YouTube kind of puts on us. So let me make it a little bit longer here. So it's 15 seconds. You can see right there, 15 seconds. And what I want to do is I want to make a transition here between our video and this outro here. So we'll go to transitions. And I usually just do fade to black. So we'll do fade to black right there. So it goes from our video. Let me turn this down real quick. It goes from our video and it fades to black into our outro screen here, our outro card. From here, I need to add some text here. So what I'm gonna do is go to the title screen here, and I'm looking for the, the upper level one, so it's upper right here. And depending on how big your window is, the thing will move around. So at full screen here, my upper is on the right side here. I'm gonna click and drag it down to here. Then I'm gonna extend it the whole length of our outro card right there. And to make sure it's exact, I'm gonna expand the timeline look and feel the length here to make sure I'm at the exact beginning and at the exact end. So I'm good to go there. So let's reshorten it there. Okay, now we'll double click on this and we'll go add our text. So I'll just do the usual subscribe. And then to keep it on the same line, I'm gonna go ahead and use the space bar. Just move my cursor. And watch more explanation, explanation. And before I do anything else, I wanna change the font here. So I'll highlight the font by clicking and dragging to highlight it. I'm gonna turn off these, this outline here, make sure it's bolded. Then I'm gonna go to find one of my favorite fonts is this one here, Avenir Next Heavy. That's kind of a big font. I'm gonna reduce the font size here to leave myself enough room to actually fit the three videos in here. And now that I've reduced the size of the font here, I can actually use my space bar to get it to where I want it, which is toward the end. Okay, and when you think you're pretty close to end, click outside here anywhere. And we gotta verify, and I, I thought that might happen. We're a little bit too, too many spaces, so we'll bring it back just a little bit. And click out here again, and now we know that it actually fits in one line, okay? So this will definitely give us enough room to put four elements, one, two, three, four, on our end card for 15 seconds, okay? Now for me, if you want some movement on it, you can use video, you could use a, uh, a picture, but for an image or a background, you can actually add movement by using the Ken Burns effect. So what I'll do is I'll double click on that. I'm gonna go to the cropping tool here. I'm gonna go to Ken Burns. And then you have your start point and your end point. And for stars in the galaxy, it really doesn't matter where I start and end, but I'm going to shrink this a little bit and put that there. So the video is going to go from big to small in that direction. Then I will check the circle with a check mark just to accept my changes. And now we can kind of watch it. Okay, so it's definitely moving. It looks kind of funky because the video is still actually rendering in the background. But in the final product, it'll look a lot better. Okay, so we have our text and we have the image moving in the background. So this leaves us a nice big palette so that once we import our video into YouTube and add our outro cards, we can actually go here and put everything we want there. And again, this clip here, this 15 seconds, it could be a video, it could be an image, or it can be one of the backgrounds that comes with iMovie. And probably you wanna add some music to your outro. You don't have to, but, or you could do a voiceover, but let's go ahead and add some music. So I'll add just a little chunk of music right here. Let's pull that down. There we go. Then I'm gonna shrink it to match. And what I wanna do is, let me 
actually I will increase the size here so you can see. If you look at the corner of this audio file here, you can actually grab that little controller and make it kind of fade in and fade out. So depending if you want the music to hit in hard or if you want it to hit in soft. So for this one, I'll do a little soft here and then I want it to kind of fade out. All right. And now I pretty much got exactly what I want. I have a 15 second clip basically with the transition that has the titles that I need at the top. It has some music and I have some movement to kind of, you know, make it look kind of snazzy or whatever. <laughs> but anyways, so that's pretty much how I do a really simple one. Oh, S-U-B-S-C-R-I-B-E. We almost made a mistake there. <laughs> All right, we gotta go in and do a little damage control here. You guys didn't catch my spelling when I was doing it. There we go. Okay, spelling all fixed, the world is saved. Well, that's it for today's really simple, easy tutorial, but it's a cool way that, to make an outro card without having to go outside of iMovie. You can just do it right here. You could actually make this video by itself and export it. And then anytime you make a movie, a new movie, a new video for YouTube, you just import this little 15 second movie and put it at the end of your current project. And that way you don't have to do this every single time. Okay, that's it. Peace. Aloha. Talk to you next one.